What's going on, man? Welcome back to another live IG. As a matter of fact, this is a simulcast. So last night, I actually had an idea to do it both on Zoom and on my IG at the same exact time. So for those of you who are probably going to listen to this in podcast form, this makes it a lot easier for me because I don't have to re-record anything afterwards. So basically, what I have here in front of me is to speak in question four, which I'm going to be going over right here, as well as the document where I'm going to be writing my notes, okay? So this is going to be in video form. So for those of you who are watching, I will put this in a Dropbox link right after this, okay, the video, so that you could actually see my note taken, and I will submit this for a score two, all right? As well as doing everything here on IG. So I'm very, very grateful that I'm actually doing this this is the first time, so I'm going back and forth, back and forth, because obviously it's in video form here on my MacBook, and I am literally right here with you guys today. So, have myself some time this morning, and a lot of my students now are booking late afternoon and evening, so I have a lot more free time in the morning. So me, I'm just like, okay, well, let me see how I can help as many of you out there as I possibly can. Because I'm waiting for, as a matter of fact, a few scores from some of my students from their recent tests this past week, too. So I woke up this morning, didn't have any messages and stuff like that, which was a little bit weird, a little bit odd. But nonetheless, I told myself, got to be productive, got to help. So here I am today, TOEFL IBT speaking question four. Here we go. You guys may have already heard me say on so many different occasions, okay, in regards to it's not about what you say, it's about how you say it. A lot of it might not even make sense. I actually had a Brazilian student just recently and she was just saying a whole bunch of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, listen, you're saying a whole bunch of blah, blah, blah. And I'm loving it. <laughs> I am loving it because I do not give a damn about what you say. I give a damn about how you say it. And her spoken fluency is, be and her spoken fluency is beginning to develop. So again, Guys, the goal for all your speaking questions, a lot of you, I'm going to say it again. This is probably the first time you're watching me. This is probably the first time you're listening to me. Just want to say hello to Aliela. Thank you so much. I'm going to be bringing you on. I'm actually doing a speaking question for real, real soon. I mean, yeah, I'm actually doing a speaking question for right now. So again, stay tuned. I might bring you on because I would like to hear your note taken if you want to do a little practicing. All right, so here we go. Let's break this down. It's how you say it. What I always do, you gotta have your structure. A lot of people, and I'm gonna address it again, they always ask me, Arsenio, template. Do I need a template? Is a template gonna help? A template only helps with spoken fluency. Spoken fluency is what you need to get a high score in your speaking question four, got it? So, and some of you out there are like, Arsenio, I'm not exactly sure you know, what, what I'm going to say, what's going to ultimately end up happening is you're going to be completely lost. Big shout out to a Gabby. Oh my God. I think I've spoken to you before. This must've been a little bit of time ago, but nonetheless, big shout out to you too, Gabby. But anyways, okay. So coming back to it, you need structure. If you have no idea what you're going to say in regards to how you're going to open up your speaking question, one, two, three, especially four, you're going to be lost. You're going to stutter. Um, uh, uh, um, eh, eh, um, those are fillers. Fillers are going to destroy your speaking rate, your overall speech rate, everything, the sustained speech, you name it. There are going to be so many unnecessary pauses. You guys are going to have to figure out your structure. If you go into your speaking question four and you're just like, I don't know where I'm going to start. Well, guess what? This is where you're going to end up falling in between a 16, 17, 18, 19. And if you get lucky, a 20. But if you know how you're going to start, it's a lot easier. And I have told you guys so on so many different occasions. By the way, Gabby Ali, I got this video. I'm recording it right now on my MacBook. So it's actually a simulcast. So make sure that you message me and say, hey, can I get that Dropbox video to see your note taken and see everything that you're actually talking about? So you don't have to come back to IG. You could go straight to the video and you could download it straight to whatever device you're actually using. Okay. So. Good old free coaching for y'all, all right? So nonetheless, what I always say at the very beginning, speaking question four, the lecture is about the two something. I always say two defensive adaptations, to this, to that, to something. 
All right, I'm gonna break it down in segments just so you guys have a very good idea of how, oh my God, at the perfect time I get something right in my eye. Thank God that went away. Okay, I break, I'm break. i gonna break it down into segments just so you know exactly what to avoid. What to avoid? Well, at the at some points, to be honest with you, what ends up happening is we have a tendency of writing down a bunch of the blah, 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 blah. Sometimes I sit back for about 20 seconds and then she finally gets into the first. This is what I mean by avoiding it because what you're gonna do, you're gonna end up writing a whole bunch of that. And then you're gonna go into the first and second, maybe around 25 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe even 35 seconds. You're going to rush, and what's ultimately going to happen is you're going to falter, you're going to um, 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 you're going to have that anxiety, you're going to start stressing out, and then you're going to lose your train of thought, and that's how you end up getting a low score. Got it? So, what I have here is a speaker. For those of you watching in video form, or if you're listening to this on, on my podcast and stuff like that, hopefully you guys don't hear an echo. All right, I'm just praying. <laughs> First time I've ever done something like this, so nonetheless... What I'm going to do on the document right now, I have the lectures about the two something. Now, this is specifically about altruism. It's not the altruism that you've heard maybe on Best My Test, that I've heard on Best My Test literally four years ago. Okay, 2019, I would teach my student from Tulalongkorn University, the top university here in Thailand. All right, I would teach her that altruism. This one's a little bit different. All right. So we need to figure out what exactly and how exactly we're going to go about understanding and our note taking. All right. So on video, you guys are going to see it here on IG. You're going to see it. Obviously, me, you know, communicating with you, which I'm doing. And then we're going to go from there. All right. So what we have here, let's see how I go about taking just a couple of notes. And I'm just going to break down that very first part. All right. So I got the speaker on. Let's hope that you guys hear it. If you guys have any questions and say, hey, Arsenio, I can hear it perfectly, give me a thumbs up. I'd love that. All right. So here we go. I'm just going to get that introduction. So let's hear this. Explore the fascinating concept of altruism in the animal kingdom. Altruism refers to behavior that benefits others without any apparent benefit to the individual performing the action. It's a complex phenomenon that challenges traditional ideas of natural selection. Whoa, whoa, whoa. As altruistic behavior may seem to reduce an individual's chances of survival or reproductive success. Yes. Yet, numerous examples in nature demonstrate acts of altruism among animals. Firstly, let's... No, there it is. Firstly, listen. We are literally... I don't even know... Listen, I'm literally at a third. You're probably going to see this in video four, Okay. She did a lot of blah, 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 blah. And I was just waiting for that firstly. I was waiting for that example. All right. And what ends up happening is we get so focused and zeroed in on that introduction that we end up having a lot of notes and we don't know how to put them together. You know what I wrote down? You're going to see it in video. I wrote down that altruism is a behavior that benefits others without any benefit to the individual that's actually doing the behavior. So what am I going to write? Am I going to write the lectures about the two? I could modify that. I could say the lecture is about altruism. Ooh. Now, if you guys have watched uh, have watched my uh, integrated essay, I'm going to define it because she doesn't give the two just yet. I'm going to write down first after that and then go from there. But I'm going to define this instead of saying the two, the two what in regards to altruism. I have no idea what she's talking about. Plus, the audio is actually pretty bad. By the way, this is on the Venice My Speaking Score dot com. OK, they actually just uploaded Venice, Italy, and you're able to get this audio from there. But it seems it sounds a little bit muggy. So I apologize for those of you who are uh, watching me on IG. Nonetheless, going back to this. The lecture is about altruism, which is a behavior that benefits others without having any benefits to the individual. That's all I'm going to say. Does that make sense? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> all I care about is that fluency. That's literally all I wrote. Her opening remarks is what I had written down. I don't care about anything else. That's the beauty of it. This is how we need to focus and refocus everything. Because again, a lot of you at times, you're just kind of just, okay, let me just hurry up and 
you know, uh, let me write as many notes as I can. But to be honest with you, the quantity is much worse. Quality is more important. And so I'm going to rewind this just about three seconds. And then we're going to go from there. And I'm going to take down the whole first part. If this dumb ass audio actually allows me. For those of you watching me on video, I apologize. Got to restart everything because it's not allowing me to do anything. So let me see if I can fast forward. I can. Here we go. Three, two, one. Numerous examples of nature demonstrate acts of. And now it's literally on. Oh, my God. I don't know what's going on right now. Okay, two seconds to everyone who's actually watching on Zoom. I don't know what happened to uh, my audio. I got to reconnect it to uh, the uh, speaker. I need to re-share the sound. And hopefully it works uh, this way. But the audio is going to be relatively low for some reason. So let me just hurry up and do this. Three, two, one. Altruism among animals. Firstly, let's consider reciprocal altruism which occurs when individuals help others with the expectation of receiving help in return. In the bird species called cleaner birds, some birds will pick parasites off the bodies of other birds, an action that benefits the groomed bird by removing harmful parasites. In return, the groomed bird tolerates this behavior, and when the roles are reversed, it also engages in grooming. Secondly, there's kin selection which involves altruistic behavior towards close relatives to promote the survival and success of shared genes. A classic example is observed in social insects like bees and ants. Worker bees, who are all female, devote their lives to the colony and do not reproduce. Instead, they assist the queen bee in raising her offspring. This behavior benefits the reproductive success of their close kin. While altruism can be seen in the animal kingdom, It poses intriguing questions for researchers as it challenges traditional evolutionary theories. Understanding the various forms of altruism in nature helps us gain insights into the complexity of animal behaviors and their impact on the survival and cohesiveness of social groups. Wow. Okay. That was a little bit of a murky. It sound like a lot of just... I don't know. The audio is pretty bad. But nonetheless, hopefully you guys hear that very well on the video that I'm actually going to be sending you. This was a little hard because I didn't even write down kin selection, but I just remembered. All right. What I did, I wrote down reciprocal and I wrote down kin selection. Now, a lot of you get have a lot of anxiety and get stressed about writing everything down. Don't worry about that. We got the reciprocal. What was the main idea about that? Bird species, what does it do? It picks parasites off other birds. That's it. It benefits that bird. Now, you may have not gotten the whole in return, it tolerates the behavior. Roles reverse, engage in grooming. I don't know what, I was actually expected that the bird that actually picks off the parasites ends up dying. So to be honest with you, I don't know what the fuck that ending is about, but I'm just going to adapt to it, all right? And then after that, we have the kin selection, all right? And that's about the close relatives and how they adapt so that they can, the survival success of genes. Now, I just wrote down survival success of genes. So by looking at my notes, I know that that's going to be a little hard. That's going to be a little hard for me to hurry up and adapt because I literally have... Kid selection, close relatives, survival success of genes. Here we go. I'm going to have to use my English to bullshit my way through all of it. (laughs) I'm going to have to literally try to bullshit my way through all of that. It's going to be a little hard, but let's see. So here we go. Social insects like bees and ants. Worker bees devote their lives to assisting queen bees in raising offspring. My conclusion would be, therefore, the challenge this challenges evolutionary theories based on the past, and it gains greater insight into social complexity in regards to species. Now, what I wrote down, what I wrote down though, was challenges evolutionary theories gain insight complexity. This is some of the difficulties that a lot of you have, just like me. I wrote down six content words. This is going to be very hard for me to not stutter and literally go through it and just go blah, 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 blah. Let's see. I have no idea what exactly is going to happen. I am actually pretty uh, excited about what's going to happen. Uh, But nonetheless, these are the notes that I got. 
So let's go over this before I do this. I'm sweating like a slave, no offense. The lecture is about altruism, which is a behavior that benefits others without having any benefits to the individual. Boom, structure. Very good introduction at the beginning. Calm, cool, collective. Now I'm gonna go into, first there's reciprocal altruism. Define it. When individuals help others without expectation. Excellent. Main idea, support, example. The in return is the conclusion to it. Then I gotta go into, second, there's kin selection, which is about close relatives that maintain order in, or, you know, in order for the survival success of genes. See, that's all based on my notes. See, this is what happens when you got a whole bunch of content words, you have no idea what you're doing. And so then I say social insects, bees, worker bees devote their entire lives to assisting queen bees and raising offspring. I did a very good job there. And then I'm gonna have to try to figure out that conclusion, all right? So what I have here, and because I'm still recording right here, I'm going to, on myspeakingscore.com, I'm gonna record my response time right here, right here, okay? And then after that, I'm gonna submit it, and then I'll cut it up, and you guys will see my score on another post that's gonna be coming up shortly after this. Oh, people. It all comes with maintaining and figuring out what that perfect balance is going to be. Sometimes we write a whole bunch of words and it's very difficult. It really is. Because we got a whole bunch of content words, but then we're like, damn, how am I going to put this all together? That's where the stuttering begins. And especially for all of you who are non-native English speakers, this could be incredibly difficult. This could be incredibly everything. <laughs> all right. This could be an absolute disaster for a lot of you out there. And I totally understand that. But it's all about figuring out that note-taking and figuring out how you could go about progressing through everything. So just want to give a big shout out to Germania Zambrano. I think I had said hello to you at some point this year. But nonetheless, let's do this, all right? I'm going to do the 60-second response time, all right? I'm rubbing my hands. I'm a little scared, but boy, I am the king of bullshitting. I know how to bullshit. Now, you guys have to, what I want you to do is focus on how I adapt and how I recover. How I adapt to the content words and the things that I have written down right here on the screen and how I recover when I start bullshitting and I get carried away with my bullshit, okay? So I'm gonna look at this screen. I'm gonna hit this bad boy. I'm gonna turn off this, all right? And I'm gonna just hurry up and make sure that the audio there's no, there's no echo in because next thing you know, oh my God, Zoom starts. What well, as a matter of fact, the speaking software is really bad when, when there's an echo. Oh my God, they end up giving me horrible scores. All right, so let's look at this. Okay, that's perfect. This is why I didn't do it in my office. So here we go. <sighs> All right, here we go. Let's do it. Three, two, one. The lecture is about altruism, which is a behavior that benefits others without having any benefits to the individual. The professor gives an example of reciprocal altruism, which occurs when individuals help others without expectation. There is a particular bird species, as a matter of fact, that pick out parasites off other birds, and that actually benefits that specific bird. In return, it tolerates its own behavior, and those roles ultimately end up being reversed and they engage in grooming too. The second one is kin selection altruism, which is all based and predicated off close relatives helping one another so that they can ensure the survival success of their genes. Social insects like bees and ants, worker bees literally devote their entire lives to assisting queen bees and raising offspring. Therefore, the challenges, this challenges evolutionary theories and gains greater insight into social complexity of animals and insects. Holy shit. God damn. I, yeah, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. My, my nose started running <laughs> this dust and everything. Oh my God. That was pretty remarkable. That is a 29th. I did not know I was going to do that. So I had no idea what happened because what ends up happening, if you guys are actually watching me, you're like, Damn, Arsenio, you got that momentum at the very beginning. I goddamn well did. At the very beginning, I was like, okay, the lecture is about altruism, which is a behavior that benefits others without having any benefits to the individual. Blah, 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 blah. And then I said, the professor. So instead of just saying first, there's reciprocal. 
I don't know. I just wanted to say the professor. And for some reason, I felt like when I said professor, this is when I ended up building. This is why I'm telling all of you right now that the structure is everything. So I said, the professor gives an example of reciprocal altruism, which occurs when individuals help others without expectation. When I got that, when I stated that, I, I felt inside. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a home run. I said to myself, I said, this is going to be a home run. This is going to be a monster because I felt like I was in that flow. I was in that flow state. And so what I mean by flow, and you guys probably have seen this before, I did this before, is when you get going, it makes it much easier. When you get out of your own head and you stop overanalyzing and worrying about what you're going to say next and you just allow that to flow, this becomes incredibly easy because by the time I went into that specific, uh, what is it? When I went into that specific area of the speaking, that was it. After that, I went example after example. And even at the end, I said some random ass things. I don't even know what I said, to be honest with you. But I just said a couple of things and I said, therefore, too. So my discourse coherence should be fire. So the audio was a little bit low. All right. I'm actually uploading my speaking right now. OK, 60 seconds remaining. We're going to see what my score is. After this IG live, I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to put it on there and you're going to see my actual speaking on the video rather than on the live. And we're going to see what I did. But the goal is, people, for all of you out there, students who watch me, people who don't know me, who are just going to find me everywhere, people who are listening to me in 200 countries on my podcast, that's why I'm actually doing it live here on my podcast, because there are so many people around the world from Guadalupe to Tanzania, all across Europe, and especially on the continent of Asia that listen to me, you got to get out of your own head. And so the bigger question is, how can I get out of my own head and stop overanalyzing what I'm going to say and just allow it to come as if I'm speaking to one of my friends? This is going to come and you're going to have to do an ample amount of, of practicing and you're going to have to develop that spoken fluency. See, when you do that, everything is going to ultimately end up changing. So with that being said, let's see what my score is right here. I'm going to sum up this bad boy, and then I'm going to let you guys go. All right. So again, I love this. And for those of you who have never met me before and you guys end up seeing me, there is a speaking course in regards to the Vancouver series, me going over this. And there's another speaking course that I did a while back. In regards to speaking question one, two, three, and four, that obviously you guys could go ahead and check out too. But nonetheless, here we go. Here are the results. I expect a 20 now. There is no other reason for me not to have the score of a 29 minimum because that, like I said, 29. All right. No, a 30. Let's motherfucking go. Okay, they gave me a 3.9. That is the first 30 I got in a long time. If we look at all the green, and this is what's funny because I've gotten a 30 before, but the thing is they were kind of bullshitting, okay? Because all of the categories were absolutely green. What I find very funny about this, and if you guys are watching this on video, I'm going to put this on video, okay? It says speaking estimate 30. I got a 3.90 speech rater score but what i find funny is in all those categories which i explained before my grammatical accuracy apparently was a 29 and my discourse coherence was apparently a 44 fuck all y'all but you know what i'm gonna give you guys a big factor right here what i ended up realizing when i was coaching one of my students i forgot who it was i believe it was isis Right. And so big shout out to Nelson. Nelson, what's going on, man? Um, but nonetheless, when I was actually coaching one of my students, Isis, I saw that in the transcript of some of the practice ones that they actually have on the website, the audio transcripts, there were a lot of big words. There weren't that many pronouns and there weren't that many prepositions. Now, my preposition score was a 13.67. Phenomenal. 
but my nouns are at a 34.53%. That is the highest I've ever had my nouns. Looking at my audio transcript, as all of you are going to see on the video that I'm going to put in the Dropbox so you can watch it. These, fuck, I don't see that many one, two, three letter words. I see a lot of big monsters. So to be honest with you, you know what I'm going to say for the first time, people, please focus on not big words because a lot of you are like my vocabulary. And I know that's the first thing that you're going to say. And I totally understand that. You're going to say, Arsenio, well, my vocabulary is that big. I can't do big words. Variety. Variety. And by doing a variety, you're going to have to overcome yourself and you overanalyze in the situation all the damn time. You overcome that and you look at this transcript and I'm going to post everything right after this, okay? <clears throat> Over the course of about two hours, I'm going to be posted everything on this IG, okay? My audio transcript, my actual mock-up of me doing the actual speaking and everything. And then you guys are going to be able to see, whoa, this is what a 30 is. Does that make sense? So, but I really want you to look at the noun at 34.53 and the words that I used, and this is what I realized too when I was actually doing the speaking, there wasn't a lot of the, 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 she, 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 he, 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 it, it, it. You heard, you saw that I only mentioned the professor one time, one time. Please don't always say the professor and then say she, 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 she. That's going to kill your score. I want you to put that into perspective, okay? Because my opening remark, I said the professor gives an example of reciprocal altruism, which occurs, woo, other than just one preposition, that is motherfucking fire. That's probably why I got a 30. And then when I went into the second idea, I said, the second one is kin selection altruism. And I used the same relative clause, which, relative pro now, is all based and predicated, ooh, off close relatives, helping one another so that they can ensure the survival success of their genes. That was all bullshit. It was all bullshit. But I said it, and I said it with conviction. And look at that goddamn score. People, you need to learn how to bullshit. This is an AI tech software, goddammit. They don't know what the hell you're saying. They don't know what words you should be using in terms of altruism. What I need you to do is I need you to be convicted in your bullshit. Because I made all that up. I made all of it up. If you go back and you're going to have the video and all of you on my podcast and the people listening to me in 200 countries around the world, big shout out to 800. 50,000 downloads, by the way, on my ESL podcast. Thank you so much to all of you, especially Japan, Brazil, those of you living in the United States and my beautiful Taiwan, you guys are always the top four. But anyways, coming back to this, all right? What we need to understand is, I totally lost my train of thought, but let's, let, me, let me see if I can get it back. Being convicted in what you say. You might have seven content words, just as I did. If I go back to my little thing, you're going to see it in video, okay? I wrote down, again, challenges, evolutionary theories, gain insight, complexity. Listen, people, I wrote down six content words. But if you look at my audio transcript, that thing is full of a lot of variety of words that are five letters and more. Maybe that was a blessing in disguise that I wrote challenges, evolutionary theories, gain insight, complexity. And then I used my English to kind of just fill in the bullshit and make up whatever fucking idea it was. Got me a 30. It could get you a 32. People, I'm telling you right here, this is the greatest one right here. Total words, 150. All right. Uh, What is it? Yeah, 150 words per minute. This is altruism from the Venice test speaking question four. Oh, that was fantastic. Now, for those of you, again, Aliella, you sent me a, a request to join. I'm not sure if you have a question or whatnot. If you still want to join, let me know. If any of you want to join and ask me a couple of questions right now before I sign off, I would love for you to come on and ask me a couple of questions. All right. Man, my nose is terrible right now. But nonetheless, man, that was a fantastic coaching session for all of you out there again if this is the first time that you've actually uh that you've actually came on and you watch me i appreciate it so much again if you have any questions about what i do 
the coaching, my courses, my podcast. You can find that. I'm going to be posting a lot of things in my IG story, so you stay tuned. But I really hope that this helped you guys. Introduction, writing down content words. But I think the biggest thing is, is how you're going to be able to bullshit your way to glory. Ah, I'm going to name the podcast that for all of you listening to me a podcast for how can you bullshit your way to glory? That's it right there. If you're following me on podcast, make sure you follow me on IG or city of ZSL podcast, the video and all the great stuff is on there. Okay. Do not, you know, it's very easy to go in there. And then for all of you who actually do not know that I have a podcast, you can check out my ESL podcast. Very easy to find. Just go on Spotify, Apple, anywhere, just go on Google. You can find it. Uh, the top ESL podcast in the world. Thank you so much for all my TOEFL followers and the people who have shared my content, man. I appreciate it so much. We're approaching and get ready to hit that 850,000 download mark. And we're going to be at 1 million downloads very soon. And oh, believe me, I got a big special treat coming for all of y'all. So with that being said, thank you so much. All right. Oh, Annalise Marquez, you came too late. Annalise, listen, if you have any questions you want to join right now uh, and you want to ask me some questions about TOEFL, the speaking question for let me know. This video, everything that I just did, it's on a Zoom. I'm going to put it in a Dropbox link. You're going to be able to watch the whole thing again, okay? So do not worry about that, all right? But man, I appreciado, all right? I just made up my own little Spanish word. Uh, <laughs> I have this available. Nelson, thank you so much for uh, following me. Annalise, it is uh, damn good to see you again. Hermania, I'm pretty sure, man, I've talked to you before. Gabby, I'm pretty sure I've talked to you. Gabby, Gabby Mediaval, okay? And Aliela, I'm not sure if you're still there. I think you are, I'm not sure. But anyways, if any of you have any questions right now, before I sign off and you want to hop on a video and ask me a couple of pointers in regards to speaking, you let me know. But nonetheless, man, that was a fantastic one. 3.90. That was a 30. That was the second 30 I ever got. Uh, right when I finished, I was like, that is a 29. If this bullshit ass software says otherwise, I'm going to catch a case. Okay. I'm going to go full motherfucking full frontal Eddie Murphy on everybody. <laughs> okay. But nonetheless, man, it came out to be a 30. But not only that, I think I have a very good understanding of how you guys can get 30s. And it's all based on using a lot of content words. I'm going to post the transcript from this audio on my IG stories, on my IG template everywhere. So you can see it. You're going to see my actual speaking in the 90 second, uh, you know, in the 60 second clip on my IG stories, as well as on the actual format. And this is going to be good for a lot of you, because if you see this and say, damn, Arsenio, you just used a lot of the words that you wrote down. I did. If you actually watch the video and you will see the video, all the words and content words that I actually wrote down is what I said. So maybe focus a little bit on your content words. And then you have to really rely on your language. And I know, Annalisa, I know you speak good English. Nelson, you look like you speak good English. I'm bullshit. I know I'm full of shit. I know I'm like, you look like you speak English. You're like, ¿Qué? ¿Qué hiciste? ¿Qué carajo? You know what I mean? I'm just kidding, okay? And Hermania, everyone else, Gabby, I know that you guys have been following me and listening to me a podcast for a very long time. You're very, very welcome, Aliela. You're very welcome for the tips and everything. I hope that this helped. And again, maybe, just maybe, you could break it down a little bit more Maybe write more content words, but then you're going to have to become heavily reliant on the English you know. All right? Oh, man, that was a fiery session. I'm so glad I woke up and I had that desire to hurry up and kick ass. So anyways, for, with that being said, got to get my workout in, get some breakfast in, got to coach one of my students from Magolia right after that. I'm going to be posting all of this stuff coming up in the next two hours. The Dropbox link, I'm going to post in a quick IG little snippet. You're going to be able to download it and do the whole, oh my God, <laughs> Desiree, I've been waiting for you for such a long time. Yes. De oh, my God. Desiree, I am willing to take about five to ten minutes off my workout. Where the hell have you been? For all of you that do not know, Desiree came to me at the beginning of this year. She was a prolific writer, a prolific writer. Her speaking and everything. She was a beast. I don't know what happened to her over the last few months. So, Desiree, did you end up taking the test? What is going on? Where the hell is Desiree? 
Okay, so Desiree, if you want to hop on, if you've already taken your test, okay, if you've already taken your test, please let me know what your score has been. Remember the last time that you actually took it? The writing was a ridiculous, oh my God. And so then I said, you know what? Focus more on the word count, this, that. Again, we're into the new TOEFL right now. It makes it a lot easier. I know a lot more things. We got to get together, okay? And if you haven't taken your test yet, we got to revamp everything, okay? There's a lot of things that I knew back then. <gasps> University of New England, first and foremost. Congratulations, felicidades, Desiree. I've never even heard the University of New England. First and foremost, I'm going to hurry up and stop my... Uh,